हेलो माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू माय क्लास आई डॉक्टर स्वाति पंड्या वेलकम्स यू माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स इन लास्ट सेशन वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट सेक्स डिटर्मिनेशन एंड वी हैव सीन दैट देयर आर टू मेथड्स एक्स ओ टाइप एंड एक्स वाई टाइप particularly in human beings we used to see the xy method of sex determination and today we are going to discuss in detail about how the sex determination occur in human beings so a diagram here it is representing the combination of sex chromosome in male and female so here this symbol is used for male and this symbol is used for female so along with autosomes there are 22 pair of autosomes in human being along with this one sex chromosome is present which is denoted as xy like this so x chromosome is this in blue color and y chromosome is just it is comparatively smaller and it is denoted as this one so both are actually different whereas in females we can see that the last pair sex chromosome it is having similar type of homologous chromosomes so xx so in this way along with 22 pair of autosomes xy present in male and xx present in females so now let us see how the sex is determined in the children's so in the in their offsprings if the cross is made between father and mother father is having xy chromosome and here mother is having xx actually there is a cross sign in between here so you make sure uh, i have not shown over here uh, but you have to make a cross here in between so that we can show the uh, cross between father and mother so here when the gametes will be formed so this line it is showing the gamete formation so when the gametes will be formed we will see that father it will produce two different type of gametes one gamete will be having x type of gene and another gamete will be having y type of gene which is responsible for sex similarly mother will produce two similar type of genes one will two similar type of gametes one will be having one type of gamete will be having x type of gene as well as same type of gene will be present in another gamete also so gametes are similar here and gametes are having different genes so in this way this is one of the difference now let us see the offsprings the various combinations here we will see that this type of cross when this x it will be crossed with the x of mother then the child it will be having x x type of uh, chromosome so it will result into a girl child similarly when this x of father combines with the another gamete which is having x type of gene again a girl child will be produced so 50% chances of having girl so only when this y chromosome of male or father it will combine with x of mother either this one or this one you can see here when this is cross which is shown when this is combined with this then a boy is produced similarly when this y it combines with another gamete then again the chances of boy will be there so 50 50% chances are there for girl and boy child so in this way the sex is determined in human in last session we have seen that how in, this is the drosophila fly i have told you this is male it is smaller in size this is female this is uh, larger in the size when we compare the two fruit flies so xy denoted in the same manner as we have shown in the human uh, sex determination method so same type of uh, determination will be followed in fruit flies also one change only here we will see that autosome number is three pairs 
and one sex chromosome so total number of chromosome pair that is four so four pair of chromosomes are present in fruit flies then this is the example in last session we have discussed about birds so birds they have totally uh, opposite concept here the male they will be having similar type of chromosomes zz denoted as zz and females they will be producing two different type of gametes because they are having z and w type of chromosome so opposite concept when we compare this example it is totally having opposite concept as compared to the human beings so this is the exceptional thing in next slide we will discuss another important term which is known as mutation so what do you mean by mutation i think uh, you are familiar with this term but if you are not then let us discuss what do you mean by mutation mutation is a phenomena which result in alteration of dna sequence any change in dna sequence leads to mutation and what will be the result the result will be change in genes which is known as genotype as well as their external visible features also which is known as phenotype so genotype as well as phenotype will be changed when mutation occur in any organism now these mutations actually uh, one term is used when there is any chromosomal change it is known as chromosomal aberrations uh, and generally it results into cancer cells so these type of changes they may lead to cancerous condition in any of the um, organism or cell actually the genes are known to be located on chromosome and alteration in chromosome it result into such type of abnormalities just i have uh, told you chromosomal aberrations they are actually abnormalities uh, due to some change in location of gene or any part of a chromosome so commonly uh, as i have told you it is observed in cancerous cell additionally uh, mutation also may rise due to change in single base pair of dna that we will discuss in next chapter uh, actually this is known as point mutation and we are going to study in detail in next chapter and uh, one of the best example which is quoted for this point mutation that is sickle cell anemia so this example you have to remember which is due to point mutation so the sickle cell anemia results due to point mutation now the mechanism of mutation is actually beyond the scope of this uh, syllabus uh, it is uh, indefinitely the study is not that much in depth which is done but uh, however there are many chemical and physical factors that induces mutation only we will talk about them uh, certain uh, basic things regarding mutation we will learn so uh, those factors which are responsible for mutation to occur the mutation can occur due to any of the chemicals any of the physical factors or any biological factor like point mutation so those which are causing these mutations particularly by chemical or physical factor they are referred to as mutagens so this is another term which you got mutagens they give rise to mutation and physical factors if we talk about they may be ultraviolet radiations or x rays or any type of radiations which are harmful they may alter the dna sequence similarly certain chemicals they induces mutation certain genetic disorders are discussed in our syllabus and uh, first of all we'll see the meaning of pedigree analysis it is a very important uh, topic and many questions they are asked in exam also on basis of or on based on 
this topic. Actually, the idea that disorders are inherited has been prevailing in human society since very, very long time. And this was based on the heritability of certain characteristic feature in families. After the rediscovery of Mendel's work, the practice of analyzing the inheritance pattern of trait in human beings began. And we know that three of the scientists, they rediscovered Mendel's work. Let us revise their names. Deveris, Teschermark and Korenz. So they rediscovered Mendel's um, contribution in uh, 1900. So by the use of the genetics, we can find many things which are useful nowadays. And uh, since it is evident that control crosses that can be performed in pea plant or some other organism are not possible in case of human being. So study of family history about inheritance of a particular trait will provide an alternative. So uh, actually an analysis of traits when we analyze the traits in several generations of a family then it is known as pedigree analysis. And if you remember about uh, the example that family pedigree of Queen Victoria, it was studied and it showed a number of hemophilic descendants as she was a carrier of the hemophilia disease. So with the help of uh, taking a look over the family chart over generation one after the other, we can find these things. In the pedigree analysis, the inheritance of a particular trait is represented in the family tree over generation. This is the method. In human genetics, actually pedigree study provides a strong tool which is utilized to trace the inheritance of specific trait, abnormality or disease. Some of the important standard symbols uh, we will discuss in next slide um, as well as um, it is uh, DNA actually it is a carrier of genetic information we all know and it is hence transmitted from one generation to other without any change or alteration. So such an alteration or change in genetic material actually it is referred to as mutation. Right now we have discussed about it. Let us see the symbols and then we will talk about certain Mendelian disorders. So here in the symbolic form this chart it is showing the symbols how in the pedigree chart we are using and we are making an analysis by using these symbols. So first symbol a square it is showing a male then females are denoted by the circle Then if the sex is unspecified, we can use this type of symbol. Then affected individuals, we have filled a color, different color is used. Here red color you are able to see or any dark color. Then when the mating between male and female, so we are using this line, a single line just to show the marriage between male and female and the children's. Then mating between relatives, it is shown by double line. They are known as consanguineous mating, the mating between relatives. Then if the children's they are uh, produced by the mating, this, is, uh, this line is showing the mating and this particular line, it is showing the uh, children's, this is a girl child and this is a boy child so in order of their birth from left to right that means girl is first and boy is second okay so this will be the first child this will be the second child similarly the parents with male child affected with disease we can fill the box because square it is denoting the male and it is differently colored that means it is affected then five unaffected offsprings can be directly denoted as this.
so various symbols we are using um, in next session we will discuss about certain uh, crosses and before that in this session only in next slide i will be showing how the examples regarding mendelian disorders they can be explained actually what do you mean by mendelian disorders and uh, we are observing this mendelian disorder in humans so broadly the genetic disorder may be grouped into two categories they are mendelian disorders and chromosomal disorders so mendelian disorders are mainly determined by alteration or mutation in a single gene these disorders are transmitted to the offspring on the same line as we have studied in the principle of inheritance so the pattern of inheritance of such mendelian disorder can be traced in a family by a pedigree analysis so most common and prevalent mendelian disorders i have written over here they are hemophilia i was telling you right now the pedigree analysis of queen victoria uh, the hemophilic children were found even the uh, queen victoria was a carrier of hemophilia so hemophilia then cystic fibrosis sickle cell anemia color blindness phenylketonuria thalassemia etc so all these are mendelian disorders it is important to mention here that the mendelian disorders may be either dominant or they may be recessive by pedigree analysis we can easily understand whether the trait uh, in any of the question is dominant or recessive so we can find with the help of pedigree and many questions they can be asked in your competitive exam also on the basis of pedigree chart so you better understand each and every step meaning similarly the trait may be uh, linked to sex chromosome uh, just i have told you in hemophilia it is uh, linked to x chromosome so we'll discuss later on but right now uh, we will be observing these two charts and uh, they are representing the pedigree analysis here a chart it is showing autosomal dominant trait for example myotonic dystrophy this is the dominant trait okay when it is in dominant condition it uh, expresses itself then another b chart it is showing autosomal recessive trait for example sickle cell anemia and why we are using here autosomal because they are present in autosomes when they will be present in sex chromosome it is sex linked but here it is autosomal uh, one of the example is autosomal dominant trait like myotonic dystrophy and b diagram for autosomal recessive trait like in sickle cell anemia so if you remember we have discussed here it is differently colored that means the female or the female parent that is affected and this is showing the mating between female and male and these are the children's now all these are not children's this is first child it is normal female this is second child it is affected male this is third child it is normal male this is fourth child it is affected female or girl we can call it this is showing the mating okay here normal male is mated with normal female and now they are having three children which are normal first girl child second again girl child and third boy so all of the three they are normal they are not having myotonic dystrophy but when we'll see this cross when affected female is mated with normal male then they are also having three children first it is normal male second it is affected female and third is normal male so in this way we can find out these things on the basis of this chart now let us discuss for b here male and female this is male this is female 
they both they are normal here when we see the children this first generation this is first child it is normal male this is second child affected male this is third child it is normal female fourth affected female and fifth normal male now when this normal female it is mated with normal male then still here we can see when both are normal the children they are normal means they are not affected but here the scenario is different here both are normal still in one of their children in the first male child the sickle cell anemia it is found it is affected and the remaining second and third girls they are normal so in this way we can show on the basis of pedigree analysis uh, what are the traits in human being so it is very helpful thing and uh, today we have learned all these things regarding the pedigree analysis the mendelian disorder in next session we are going to discuss detail about some of the mendelian disorder so till then take care revise all the things this chapter is very very important point of examination even the next chapter will be important it is the study of genes it will help you in further studies also in your uh, colleges or even in the further research work if you are going to there so these chapters are very important to learn so keep on learning and uh, till then take care bye bye students